and we got interested in how people combine information from different kinds of cues, cues in the physical world, landmarks, walls of a room, and so forth, and also cues provided by their own body, the movement of their body, uh, to locate themselves in the environment. I mean, that's really what we're after, is a deeper a scientific understanding of that process. This is the first time that anybody's shown any behavioral effects, that, uh, that, a, that a person's actual performance in a task, the way they act and behave, uh, is predictable by properties of grid cells, and that's never been demonstrated before. Grid cells are part of a complex network of cells in the brain. Grid cells are these really interesting cells in the entorhinal cortex. So there are a bunch of spatially selective cells. Grid cells are just one of them. Together, these form a system uh, that allow us to find our way to a distant goal that we can't see. Uh, it would eventually guide us to a model of how people uh, use information in their body and information in the world to uh, find their way to a goal location and use that information to also find their way back home at the end of the day. The participants would wear uh, what we call a head-mounted display. This is basically like wearing a computer screen in front of your eyes. Uh, and the trick, though, is that we can use cameras to keep track of the location of the head-mounted display. Uh, and the head-mounted display also has a sensor that, that allows us to keep track of the head's or their orientation. They find themselves uh, located inside an enclosure. It's either square or rectangular. And on the outside of the enclosure are some big landmarks that allow them to stay oriented, like a, a church steeple and a tree. Uh, and they look around and uh, they see a red post and their job is to walk to that red post. And then they need to find a green post. They turn around and look and they find the green post and they walk to that and they're led to a succession of four green posts. When they finally reach the last post, the entire environment disappears and so it's basically complete darkness and the participant needs to turn to, in the right direction and walk to the location of that first red post. What they don't know is that the enclosure has actually changed shape. It's gone from square to rectangular or rectangular to square, sometimes expanding, sometimes contracting. Uh, and uh, it's the effect of that manipulation that we observe in their homing performance that is their ability to walk from that last final post to that first red post. And what we showed was that if the environment was compressed along one of the dimensions, then people tended to walk too far. They would overshoot uh, the, the goal they were intending to reach. Uh, but if the environment was expanded, then they'd undershoot, that they would not walk far enough. Uh, this target location is exactly what you'd predict from certain key properties of grid cells, which means uh, that uh, we may have behavioral evidence of grid cells in humans. That would be a first. Uh, and secondly, what we've shown is a possible way that grid cells could function in human navigation.